Kaldı. Kaldı. You're just gonna fillet this sucker right off the bone. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Fish Out Northwest, winning on Tommy Donlan. This is what you call a bait stop. Hello and welcome to Fish Hunt Northwest, Wayne England, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, the general himself, Mr. Bill Herzog. Greetings, everyone. You are back. Uh, of course I am uh, back. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't keep me away. I know, I know. It's a simple phone call away to the east side and you jump in the rig and here you are. I need a, one of those transports like from Star Trek. That would be a lot easier. It's a lot cheaper than the gas. Always great to have you stand in when Tommy is uh, out doing what Tommy does and mm -hmm. at this time of year he is chasing elk and a little more about that later. But I uh, want to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you're jumping on board here first time at Root Sports, uh, thank you for that. First time, go ahead and uh, make sure you check out all our social media platforms, uh, Facebook, our YouTube channel, subscribe, please help us build those numbers. Uh, follow us there over there at Facebook and check out Instagram. Also go to our webpage, www.fishhuntnw.com. There you're gonna find an FHN20 coupon that directly links you to Edge Rods, Edge Fishing Rods by Gary Loomis. FHN20 coupon code at checkout, all fishing rods all the time through FHN and Edge Rods. 20% off unless they're previously with another uh, coupon code mm -hmm. or reduced pricing. So be sure to check that out. But uh, in the meantime, Bill, we've had a couple of great days on the water, if right. you call working hard with no reward other than sunshine and sunburn. Well, that's sometimes it's like that. And you know, you can't say co-host without co-ho. You cannot. Way, and no. we have a lot of co-ho yes. action going on. So we will be getting into that here very shortly. Handful of things going on. We do need to make point of, yep, Tommy is gone. Uh, elk hunting. Hopefully he's got a bull down. Uh, hard to communicate with him in his location. So we're hoping to get an update here soon. Maybe he could bugle to us. Maybe he could. Mm -hmm. Bill is in place tonight with co-host duties and we have a lot of content to get through. Uh, speaking of hunting, you know, Saturday is opening day modern rifle for Washington State for deer hunting. Uh, stay tuned later mm -hmm. in the show, a little update on some of the private timber industry uh, lands access and or denied due to fire danger. We still got a red flag warning coming this weekend. 80 degrees again today. I, I feel so bad for the hunters. They're going to be walking on potato chips. Oh, it's unbelievable. Weekend. It is. The woods are so noisy. Right. It's unbelievable. So uh, keep that in mind. You do have some other things to take advantage of tonight and tomorrow night. You got clam digs still going on. Wow. Do we dare say the Mariners? Oh, <sighs> doggone it. So things are happening. Busy weekend to look forward to. Lots of opportunity. Weather is coming. Change is coming yeah, about yeah. in the very near future. Um, things to talk about as we move on through this next week that can start getting things pretty exciting. Tributary fishing is on the horizon. But right. before we get too far along, hey, let's walk down. Running down the show tonight. Uh, a little okay. different program tonight. First half of the show. A little different format. Uh, sit back and enjoy the FHN crew out on the water for the next couple segments. Coho fishing in the coastal shallow waters, Bill. Marine fisheries yeah. with great content and some great tutorials built in for you to follow along with. And then when we come back from that, yes. you, my friend, back ah. in the bait lab yeah. with Bill Herzog. Spinner fishing for coho, current conditions, and then, of course, the conditions to come. And I had mentioned that rain is on the way. Eventually. We do live in the Northwest, and it, relax, folks, it will rain. It will but, rain eventually, but right 21st or 22nd. Right. Yep, Boy. yep. Uh, and then, is it ever too early to talk steelhead with you? It's never too early. Okay, so we, too late? we are going to do that. We're going to talk steelhead with uh, Bill Herzog, just back from the Skeena up there in BC. Yes. And I can't wait to delve into that. You had a great, <clears throat> great trip once again. Then we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here later on the show with a few uh, points of reference, things you need to know about. We'll talk about this potential closure in the woods coming private industry or uh, timberlands due to fire mm -hmm. danger. Again, 81 degrees today while we're out there on the river trying to get coho in, in, in just extremely bright sunlight mm -hmm. in clear water, low gin clear. Uh, makes it a little problematic. Yeah, more than problematic, Dwayne, when you got such bright light 
and all the pressure that those fish were under also right. going on and clear water. As we all know, coho salmon are very dependent on water conditions. Absolutely. And when it's like we saw, nothing is tougher. That is nothing right. Is tougher. Yep. And uh, lots of fish rising. <laughs> Took a lot of video of fish pulling up, <laughs> flipping us the fin, so to speak, and oh, having yeah. a good time. Do I dare say the chum are in already mid-October? We're already seeing some chum. We'll show you that a little later on as we get into the show. So we have proof. Don't, yes, we do. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. We're going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. Going to take you out on the waters with the FHN crew in the Mustang Outlied, chasing coho in the marine areas, the shallow water fishery. Some of the things we did to produce and uh, how successful we were or were not. Stay tuned. We'll get to that right after this break here, Fish Hunt Northwest. Defiance Marine is the one stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you toward living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dream through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. Typically what we're getting out here, 
In the salt water, uh, shallow water fish, we're in about 20 feet of water, so 18 feet of water. That was a chartreuse brine, red label herring. They like the small bait out here, but chartreuse, Potsky Spire brine, chartreuse, has been getting it done. This is a hatchery fish, no adipose fin, and uh, they keep two a piece wild or hatchery, so we got five more to get. Here we go. Oh, here you go, George. Fish. Fish, 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 fish. Oh, let's pull that one up. Yeah. Thank goodness. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Nice it happens once in a while out here. We're gonna hook a Chinook, can't keep them. The fact that it comes on pin, nothing wrong with that. Hey guys, Dwayne England Fish on Northwest. And we're out here on marine waters. We are fishing uh, just not too far outside of Westport in some uh, shallow water conditions, a little murky water. Uh, it's a great, uh, great coastal bay fishery that we've been taking advantage of. And so today, out here doing it again, running bait, running uh, fire brined, uh, chartreuse, red label herring, and running fire brine natural with just a little bit of blue to it with some uh, Atlas Mike's anise oil anchovy. And both baits are working. So three of us on board today, we're running three rods, two out the side with the chartreuse fire brined herring, and this back rod with our 360 Brad's Revolutionary Flasher, pretty much running the anchovy on that. We've been bit on all three. We've put some fish in the box already. Now we're gonna show you how the rest of the day unfolds. Oh, fish, 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 fish. He's got center rod. Still there, yep, still there. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, coming right up. Okay, buddy. Oh. Oh. There we go. Okay. Right through here. Through the box. Just like that. Set the lid there. Under hatch. Go another hatchery fish. And a lot of the bigger bucks are starting to come in too. We're getting some 12, 13 pounders, but you know what? Any fish out here in the shallow marine water is gonna, it's gonna work. So we'll throw him in the bag. Allied the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Hi, this is Joe and Megan from Archery World. Uh, we have four store locations. We are at the Lacey location right now. I uh, just want to highlight some of our camping gear. We have uh, Mystery Ranch packs. We have crispy boots. We have six hour optics. We carry Havilon knives. We carry Garmin products as well. So it's not just archery. We want to try to make this one stop shopping for you guys. And so if you need it and it puts you in the outdoors, we probably have it. So come down and see us.
right, we're out here in the marine area today. We're fishing for coho in shallow water and we're using a variety of baits here. I got uh, some anchovy cured up in fire brine. Now this is mostly natural fire brine with just a splash of blue. And you can see with just hardly any blue in there, it actually adds quite a bit of blue. I also put in some Atlas Mike's uh, anise just to give a little different scent trail. And that is definitely working. I have some anchovy in the fire brine chartreuse. And I also have red label herring, which is your smaller herring, and green label herring, only because we're running out red label. So they prefer a smaller bait out here. So we're mostly running these anchovies in the red label size herring. Uh, if we have to, we'll jump to the greens. Now, one thing I like to do, because we do have seaweed and eelgrass and stuff out here that can knock your bait off, uh, it works really well just to put them in a helmet. These Rice Davis helmets work fantastic. This is actually an anchovy helmet, but the red label fits into it just fine. So. We're gonna go ahead and stuff that herring in there, pin it through the head, drive that on through. And now it doesn't get real complicated with hooks in and out and, and trying to adjust and everything. I just like to drag this down three quarters of the way, stick it through the meat of the herring, grab a good, good amount of it there, and then a simple pull, put a little bend in that thing, okay? We have a broken off toothpick in the head right here, or in the helmet, which adds friction and holds that tension and keeps the band in your hair. All right, let's dump it in the water and see how it spins. See that chartreuse brine coming off the back of it, putting that scent trail out. Oh yeah. Oh, fish back on, Brian. Whoop. He's there, he's there, he's there, he's there. Again, keep him good with that. Look this side. Just got that adipose fin intact. A lot, uh, a lot brighter than our last fish, but you can see the quality of this fish out here. The shallow water, green area, kicking out some really good quality fish. So that one was on a chartreuse anchovy out the back. Okay guys, real quick, just kind of the rigging of the day, what we've been using out here and finding success. Braided line, uh, 10 and a half foot edge rods, 1065, uh, 360 pros, and this is my little weed stopper in here. This thing works great just to help keep your gear clean. Braid, braid line, down to a uh, VIP, VIP sliding lock, which prevents line twist. That goes to a 12 inch dropper. Actually on these bait rods, Right off the bottom, up one crank, so we're using 20 ounces of lead just to get it down. That's a slider into our terminal end, which clips to our V-chain. I got a 24-inch bumper on here out of 200-pound test mono. Goes to our 11-inch YBC BMK flasher. Seems to be getting it done out here. Water's a little stained. Been utilizing this red and silver flasher. Worked really well. I've shortened up my leaders because of the dirty water. Running about a 40 to 42-inch leader of 30 or 40 pound fluorocarbon to tie a dual hook, basically a mooching rig, into our Rice Davis helmet to protect the bait on the troll. And that, that's the basic rig that we've been using out here day after day, finding success. Inline rotator out the back. You see that rod pumping? I'm utilizing uh, 10 inch Rad's Revolutionary 360 flasher. On that one, I'll run a 30 inch liter and bait in the helmet, typically the anchovy. And that 30 inch liter on that 360 flasher gives that bait a tremendous amount of whip. Uh, and it really seems to work well. We're fishing this rod, or if I have two of them back here, suspended up 24, 26, 28 feet on the line counter 
on 12 ounces of lead. Basically same setup, 360 flasher out the back, inline rotator on the front, and been getting it done. That rod run. Oh, he's right there. Oh, oh, hot oh, hot oh, hot oh, hot oh hot out of there. I'm trying. <laughs> oh boy. What's going on here? Where are we at? Oh, you're good. Okay. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yep. On this side. yep. 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 Go ho rodeo. Oh, buddy. That's what we want right there. Step back. This is a nice size fish here. He does not want to come in exactly. There we go. Another nice spot. Ooh, there we are. Hold on. I'm getting the little colored up bucks today, but look at that guy. He's a donkey. Okay. There you go. This is what this fishery can offer, man. Look at the quality on that coho. Wild fish. We can keep him out here. I think he's got the chartreuse fire on the side of his body. He hammered that herring. That's why we use that chartreuse out here. A little bit of dirty water, but I'm telling you, man, the UV and quality of chartreuse how much it shows up down there on the bottom is amazing. Quality fish for sure. There you go. What do you think? That was a great day on some really beautiful fish that are in great condition. Yep, yep. These salt fish are hard to beat. Uh, another successful day out here in the shallow salt water, as I refer to it. You know, we're just not too far outside of Westport here, and um, fishing's been fantastic. All right, that's going to do it for us out here on the water today. We'll see you back in the studio right after this. Contract Security Service provides day to day peace of mind as they protect people and property. Here at Phoenix, we provide service for multiple state and federal contracts with services ranging from uniform, patrol, alarm monitoring, canine detection, executive protection, as well as investigative work. Recruiting highly qualified officers is the first step in building a strong team. If you are prior military or law enforcement, go to www.phoenixprotectivecorps.com and apply today. New days, new beginnings, new friends, New loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975, providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, come visit us today. The outdoors awaits you. Sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh yeah. Oh. 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 oh geez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. All right, well, there you go. Welcome back in studio to Winning Bill Herzog. And uh, how'd you enjoy that? Wow. Huh? I didn't have enough popcorn. Yeah, uh, not, a, uh, not a bad day of fishing. We got out there on the water with my buddy Brian and Jordan there and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, captured a little bit of content there to share with the folks, some tutorials. Right, Hopefully right, that yeah. gave you guys a little insight on what it is we're doing out there. 
a little bit of a difference than what we experienced yesterday. Okay, I'm watching this video and mm -hmm. I'm going, this is absolutely nothing like we had. We had six inches of visibility, the yeah. turbidity out there yeah. shut us down. And by yeah. the way, the wind was blowing, oh, I don't know, Mach 12 while so we were out there. So we had wind at our back when we were fishing the bottom end of that outgoing tide, but right. when that tide flips around and we got that incoming tide and the wind out of the north, northeast, mm -hmm. and those two worlds collide, it gets a little lumpy bumpy. We had to run all the way back to the other side, north side of the channel. And uh, that still didn't materialize. And then we had the gill netters going in at oh, 12 o'clock sharp and corking off the recreational guys. We had a guy, Tim was, I don't know. 50, he was 15 feet off of his bow. Yeah. We were about 40 thing, feet apart. Yep. And dude just comes right Gill net right between the two of us. How's he had to going, put the brakes buddy? on and pull the gear and scoot yeah. around. And then the, uh, then the big... Uh, Ocean ship came barging on in there, and all the gill netters had to reel in their uh, I mean, their nets real right when they yeah, put them out. They had to pull was, them right back in. And finally, I'm like, let's see, tugboats, ship coming in, uh, gill nets getting thrown about, and we're doing the the Drano 500 yeah. in between the gill nets. It's like it's time to go. Dogs we just and pulled cats the plug. Living together, pure and the, you know the wind just didn't stop, and no. so. A bit different yesterday experience oh for you, unfortunately, compared to what we've had out there previous days. And it's just, I mean, that's fishing, right? Some right, days, right. You, you don't know. Yeah. You I don't mean, know till you go. So, though, that is one of those you do pay attention to tide. Tide sure, does affect, sure. you know, and, and I found better parts of the tide to fish than not. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, you know, I'm always checking wind. You're out there in flat, wide open water. That wind can get cooking down through there. And, and nothing um, to slow it down. No, and it's uh, wind is problematic only because of boat control. Uh, troll speed sure. and the ability to fish your gear efficiently. Right? You're either going, you could be going too fast, too slow, too yep. fast, too Constantly. slow. Constantly, yep. And when, when that's happening and you can't get a constant presentation, success is not likely. Yeah, it's very tough to mm -hmm. uh, to be accurate in that regard. So, right. but you know, got you out there. Hopefully next week, maybe we get you out there again and uh, we'll, again. we'll see, well, you know, maybe next Wednesday we mm -hmm. pop on out there again and give it a go. So mm -hmm. hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're gonna jump out for a quick break. We come back. This gentleman right here is going to be in the bait lab. Spinners yeah. for coho. Current conditions that we have right now with this low, clear water right. and how much of a battle it is. And yet, what's to come? We got Ooh, rain coming, yes. so they say. 21st, 22nd, hopefully it starts. Looks like maybe upwards of a week of rain and, you know, it could be a cumulative upwards of three inches. Well. It's going to be our enemy for the first couple days. Mm -hmm. But... but we're going to like it. So, yes. uh, okay, jump out uh, for a quick break. If you're joining in on uh, Root Sports, first half of the show, done. And we uh, will be back after this break. Second half of the show to come, so don't go anywhere. Be back in about a minute and a half right here at Fish on Northwest. Hi, we're Joe and Megan Malico, owners of Archery World up here in Lacey. We're a full pro shop, so we have a uh, full pro service also. We have a huge indoor range. Uh, we carry 11 bow lines, all the major bow lines, and then there's subsidiary uh, companies too. Like if we carry Bowtech, we carry Diamond. If we carry Matthews, we carry Mission. When you come in, we're going to ask you, uh, you know, what kind of price point you're looking for. Um, you know, what's your hope, what's your goals, what's your scope. And with that information in mind, we'll point you in the direction of, uh, you know, that price point goes and then maybe give you uh, the option to test fire, maybe a higher level bow, just so you can compare. But um, it really is all about uh, getting what it is that's going to work for you. We don't upsell anyone. They shoot it. They like it. They don't like it. They don't get it. We don't. We don't operate like that. And so if you need it and you're, it puts you in the outdoors, we probably have it. So come down and see us. Bill Herzog here. We're back in the bait lab, brought to you by Sport Cohen Maxlers. And today we're talking about one of my favorite subjects in the whole world, metal. 
Spinners, basically, okay? Welcome to my world. This is just one more way. We like to fish for coho in the fall, one of my favorites. And, you know, there's so many ways to catch them, man. There's bobber eggs, plugs. You can cast plugs. You can back them down. You, you can even use spoons. Mm, I've been able to do that a few times. But And the old, so popular twitching jig. Uh, but spinners and coho, they're made for each other, kids. And so we're going to talk about what you see right in front of you right now, spinners and coho. You know, way back in the 40s, the MEPS company made... Made, they're a French company, and they're the first ones that ever made a spinner, okay? So when you say a French blade, that's what we're talking about here. When you see these spinners here, all these oval-shaped spinners you see here, the blades, they're called a French blade. They're, they cause the most vibration, the best, uh, the best flip, the best flash. And so when you talk about a French blade, now you know where it came from. There's basically two most popular sizes of spinners, number fours and number fives. That's your blade sizes, right? Some components, you know, like your homemade, you can go to like Pentac and go to River Fisher and make your own, but most of us don't have that time or the ability, so what we do, we see what's available commercially. And what you see here are two of the most uh, popular brands probably out there in the market. Number one is, of course, the Blue Fox Vibrax. We all know that, and we've all, we all buy those. We all have boxes full of these. Coho love them. And also, you might want to try all oh, the flash glow here made by Yakima Bait. But uh, most of the time, when you see guys throwing spinners, they're throwing the Blue Fox Vibraxes. And with their weights, uh, they're not heavy. You know, normally when you see spinners and guys make their own, often they're very heavily weighted. These are not. The number fours are quarter ounce only. We'll talk about, about these weights a little bit later. And the number fives are one third ounce. You want them light for good reason. And before we talk about blade finishes, hook configurations, we're going to talk about uh, just that, hook configurations, before we get into blade uh, colors and whatnot. Now, what you see here, you see single, single hooks. They store better, and they hook better. And, when, and what I have done on these, like when you normally pick a spinner up commercially made, it has a treble hook on it. And when I take a pair of big wire cutters, and I'll cut those off, and what I'll do is I'll take a number four split ring and a number five uh, swivel and then hang a two aught on the number four. I'll hang a two aught side wash on it and a number five. I'll hang a number three. This is for balance. Okay, you want the spinner to lay down. You don't want it tipped up. You don't want it tipped down. The right size hook holds fish and it's also for balance. Now, why I put this, why do you, I have the, uh, the swivel on there? Well, let me show you real quick. I'll grab one of these. Some of these have just plain single hooks right attached to the spinner, but uh, the ones with the swivel on them now, I want to see what happened. Tim, this is the fish's mouth, okay? That thing's going around like there, and bang. There it is, right in the corner of the mouth. It swivels, makes a cam action, and every time it'll stick right in the corner of the mouth, upper or lower, you miss very few strikes. And the single hook, not only does it store better, it hooks a lot better and holds more meat. You want to know what I'm talking about. Okay. And two things about, we're talking about colors now in these spinners. You just need two things. There's the attraction radius about the flash and how big of an area it attracts the coho to come see it, and the attraction threshold, very important, and that's in the color, okay? We, we, you can't just, you look at this, you go into a room, you go into Sportco, for example, and there's a whole wall of spinners. There's a hundred colors on there, right? Which ones do I want? Most of those are for the angler. There's only a few that you really need to take with you and match the conditions, okay? In clear water, we're going to take uh, plain metal finishes, just like copper, and brass right here. Something low, low flash, 60% flash is coming back off of these. It reflects 50, 60% amount of light, okay? Keep it low. You don't want, you want to go over that attraction threshold. That's so very important, man. You know, when you get that, uh, when the fish, you want to jazz them, but not scare them, okay? That's really important, okay? And uh, you're talking copper and even nickel, nickel and brass, copper, nickel, brass. You know, if for, for low, when you have to go on the water's low and clear, we don't want to. Coho don't play very well when the water's very low and clear. They're very uh, condition-specific creatures, man. They like it when that water's dropping and clearing, and that's really when you want to go target. But if you have to go, you want the plain metal finishes, copper, brass, nickel. Stay, keep it low, keep it slow, okay? And now when it's dialed in, this is what we all look forward to. Not right now. But it's going to rain. And when it rains, kids, oh, my, when that water turns green and start to drop, it's go time, right? When they're dialed in, that's when they're most aggressive. And you need more pop then because you have limited visibility. You have like three to six feet of visibility, and that's what you want. 
you want something with a little bit more flash, and that's when silver plate comes in. Silver plate uh, reflects, no, not nickel, silver plate reflects 90% of the light that hits it, bigger attraction radius, and doesn't bring them over that attraction threshold, okay? It, it jazzes them, and you really can't use a bright enough lure to make it pop when, uh, when the water's dropping and doing it. And, uh, not only do you, you just have your, your colors in plastic, but a lot of times you see a few of these, you see a small hoochie attached to it. That's really popular nowadays. Guys are putting small hoochies, usually pink or, or hot orange or something, but just a little extra profile and a little extra something on there to make that attraction radius a little bit better, okay? They're not shy either. So what I use, before we talk about how we're going to use these, uh, Gear lines and leaders and things. I use 30 pound bright braid main line. I like that I can see. I like to watch my line bounce. It tells me that my spinner blade is moving, okay? And on that braid, I'll put either uh, eight feet of 15 pound test uh, maxima ultra green or 20 pound test fluorocarbon. Use heavy line. They can't see it, they don't care. They're coming up from behind it and they're aggressive. Use heavy line because the strikes can be <laughs> pretty vicious. So you want to make sure you don't bust them off. And by the way, uh, uh, this spinner, okay, now we're going to talk about how we fish them. The reason they're light is these spinners, the, the lift that creates when the spinner blade goes around, the lift that creates pushes them towards the surface. You want to negate that push as much as possible. So we always fish spinners above us. We cast upstream. Let them sink down to approximately, a, in your mind's eye, I'll tell you, about a foot from the deck, and then start your retrieve. Usually when you start your retrieve, snap that rod tip just a little bit to make sure that blade is going, and watch your rod tip. Super important. As it, you bring it back to your position as slow as possible just to keep it moving and off the bottom. That's why these spinners are lightly weighted, okay? Uh, watch your rod tip. What you want to see is... Uh, in a 1001, you want to see two, two to three thumps, like 1001, 1001, like that. that. That tells you your blade is popping and flashing at its maximum and swiftly moving, not swiftly, but slowly moving along the deck so the fish can see it. It's right down in their, right down in their wheelhouse, okay? Now a little bit about color. Uh, let's start right out. You'll see these two right here. These are something you definitely want to get, especially for hatchery steelhead. Okay, not steelhead, hatchery co. I got steelhead on the brain. Sorry, I just came back from Canada. These are the orange bodied brass blade for hatchery coho. I don't know why they love this combination so much. And make sure you have a couple of these in there. Now, the bodies, if you're going to pick some, uh, especially when the water's dropping into shape, you want to go hot pink. Chartreuse, one and two. Those probably two colors catch more coho than any other on the whole planet. And then you want to go uh, orange would, would be last, all right? The rotating blade, again, you want to try to don't cast downstream. There's too much lift, too much push, and the blade spins too fast. You want to always want to fish spinners above you and bring it down to you. And bring a sharpener, kids. you got to have a sharpener, okay? You want these hooks super sharp. We work so hard for bites. We don't, want to, we don't want to get a, our, our one bite a day from a nice fish and have it come right off. No good, all right? And remember when you start lure fishing, start at two and a two and a half feet of visibility. When that, we finally get our rain and it drops, that's what we're going to want, all right? So again, fish them upstream, fish them slow, fish them low, and keep casting. That's the whole thing. This has been your metal moment here on the Bait Lab, the spinner version, here on Fish Hunt Northwest. Back to the studio. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years, Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five-year top-to-prop and let them help you get into your very next boat. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company could build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them.
Alrighty, welcome back here in the studio to Wayne England and Bill Herzog. Nicely done there, buddy. Well, you know, I need an hour. When I started I talking about metal, I could go on and on and Forever. on. Forever. There's never enough time in the Bait Lab segments, but uh, no. you knocked out of the park. You covered a lot of ground there. Hopefully, uh, you guys took away a few notes from that right, because right. it was very in-depth. Lots of... Right. Lots of content right there. Yeah, well, what we needed was some rain, man. When you want to use spinners like I'm talking yep. about, man, yep. it's so much nicer when you got that water on the drop. It's so much more aggressive. And what we saw today oh boy. is what you don't want to ever no, see. No, no. That was about the worst conditions to try and throw any type of metal. Right. It was any brutal. Type of metal. It yeah. was brutal. So, uh, speaking of which, a little yes. metal throwing, a little, uh, well, little slinging, a little tossing. Uh, yeah. You just returned from BC. I did. Um, and that's why I, that's why I said steelhead. I know. It's, it's on your brain. On the brain, it's on your brain. Now, this is not the first time up there for you. No, you no, have uh, no. made this uh, journey up there to the Skeena area how many times? I've think? been. The first time I went it was in 1979. And I, oh, only, right? only, I had a, a lull between 2007. And I, I, had a, I had a 10 year hiatus mm -hmm. in there, but I try to go every year. And by the way, it's not cheap. No, <laughs> no, it's not. But it's well worth it. And were you fishing the Skeena or were, um, were you on tribs of that system? Where, yeah. where were you exactly? I, I was fishing the Kispiox, okay. which the Kispiox and the Babine River have the biggest steelhead in the world. Right. The biologists say that the top end of these fish, get ready kids, mm -hmm. 60 pounds. What? Right. Well, when you walk into the Smithers Airport, which is the hub for everywhere you go into, yep. when you get in the Smithers Airport, there's a case sitting right in front with two steelhead. They were caught in the commercial nets at the mouth. Yeah. One weighs 42 and one weighs 45 pounds. No kidding. No kidding. From when? From uh, right about 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. But every year, these size fish sneak up there, and that's why we go up there. We want to try to tangle with one, and oh, by golly, I've seen one up close. Do you know what the, the world record is up there or what the, what the BC record is up there for a fish pulled out of that system? No, it's uh, 40, uh, 42 pounds. Hook and line. Yeah, hook and line, 42 pounds. It was caught by a salmon plunker in the lower Skeena. Oh, no kidding. Well, the only reason they landed it because when you're plunking for kings, oh, you're yeah. using big, giant, yeah. heavy gear, and yeah. otherwise, you're not gonna land those fish. No, you gotta no. Believe me I mean, you one. think a, a 40 pound Chinook puts up a fight. Oh, <laughs> take <laughs> a steelhead. They come from a different dimension. It's a I'm completely quite different sure. animal, they come, right? They come through mm -hmm. a dimensional portal. Oh, I'm sure. And then come right and screw us, and then, and then they uh -huh. leave. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. exactly, right? yeah. Um, how, is, how is that run faring? So. What I mean is if we look historically last, say, five-year window here mm, right. within the Northwest, and we've watched our steelhead runs just decline, decline, mm. decline. What we're experiencing now out there on the coast is very uh, reminiscent of what we have experienced in Puget Sound in right, the transition. Right. You and I back in the day on radio were talking about this is what's going on in Puget Sound right now. Mm -hmm. The coast is next, just yeah. based on the way this goes, right? So. Right, right. Uh, kind of bring folks up to speed on the plight of the steelhead in that region that you're so familiar and passionate about. Are they in trouble? Well, it's just like the all along the whole West Coast. We mm -hmm. saw last year, for the first time ever last year, the Skeena system was closed early. Right. Because like our steelhead here, they just weren't coming back. Oh my goodness, what do we do? You know, the sky is falling, chicken little is running around screaming. However, this year, like we saw earlier this year, we got a little bump in our steelhead runs. We have about almost 130,000 summer runs came over Bonneville this year. Right, here. yeah. And twice as many as last year. And mm -hmm. this year up there, they didn't quite experience the big bump that we got down here, mm -hmm. but it was still, it's like they have the Taiyi test fishery in August to see how many steelhead are coming up, how many they catch. And it was like 30th overall since the 1940s. So it's a kind of an average run, a little bit better than it has been. And the fishing was was okay. Okay, it was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at that entire region, that system, uh, talk a little bit about. So you mentioned it's not cheap to go up there. No, not at all. You no. you you have to go with an out. So you, you're not a resident of BC. Mm -hmm. So that changes the game completely. Right. 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 So you go up there. What do you need to like purchase? What type of licensing is required? And what days can you or cannot fish? You have to be with an outfitter. How does this yeah, work? Well, on the weekends, if you're not a British Columbia resident, you cannot fish on the weekends. Like if you're an American or for any other country mm -hmm. or somewhere else, you mm -hmm. can't. If, if you're guided, you can, which is kind of cool because the weekends, everybody just kind of clears out. All the tourists are gone and just oh, yeah. the locals and the lucky people like me that got to fish with a guide. Yeah. But it's, uh, it, you're, you have to buy a yearly license, which is $150. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter how many days you're there. And each mm -hmm. day, you have a special waters permit, like to fish the Kispiox, the Babine, the Bulkley, the Sestet, or the main Skeena. Limited entry? 
Yeah, you, right? you know, limited entry, gotcha. and uh, it's 20, 20 bucks a day on top of your uh, on top of your license, your annual fee. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to be with an outfitter. Yep, can't fish on weekends unless you mm -hmm. are with an outfitter. Right. So mm -hmm. you can go up there and fish on your own. Certainly, it yeah. has to be Monday through Friday. Right. Yeah, and you have to pay your daily fee. Right. And you have right. you, you can't buy a license anywhere. You have to get them online before you go. So uh, every fish you landed, uh, swinging or hardware or what was your go-to up there? Well, if I had, if I had my druthers, mm -hmm. you know me, I'd rather swing a spoon because oh, yeah. that's how you're going to get the giants. You want a giant, but you know I hooked some awfully big steelhead on swinging a fly when we're fly fishing up there, mm -hmm. Dwayne. We're throwing a big lure, a great big oh, bunny big fly monster, like that. Yeah. It's a big wake, like a plug. We're sure. hanging plugs out. Yeah, yeah. And I swung fly most of the time because yeah. I really enjoy the grab. It's mm -hmm. all about the grab. You know, you look at, look at my posts, I hashtag <laughs> yes, the grab, right? you it's do. Always, yeah. It's always about the grab. Yeah. And I did get one nice fish about the same size as this one right here. Okay. You know, up all there right. on my yeah. last day, which was pretty special because yeah. I'd missed so many years and I, I just had a chance to had had a chance to go up there and fish. And so that was pretty cool. I did get one nice, really one That's nice fantastic. Deal. And then mm -hmm. for you, I mean, that's, that's everything. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it's, you know, we've had discussions in the past too. It's like, you know, how many is enough? Is Right. One enough, two for a day. Oh. You know, if you if you if you get a tug and miss it, and then you land a fish, is that a successful day? How do you how do you quantify a successful day of steelhead fishing, mm -hmm. right? And for everybody, it's different. Right. Well, we're not salmon fishermen. No. Like when we salmon fish, we expect to have multiple hookups. Yep. That's just the way it goes. Yep. It's a yep. whole different mindset. But when you're steelhead fishing, you're looking for the one. Yes. Uh, we always used to say uh, big difference between one and zero. Right. When we're steelheading, uh -huh. and especially if you're swinging a fly, mm -hmm. that's pretty. That's Raises the level of difficulty quite a bit. Did you see any other mm -hmm. people up there? I saw, yeah, I saw some locals and met some fans and gave a lot of spoons away. And I did a, do oh. a little bit of spoon fishing. Okay. The problem was it was so, unlike today, yeah. the coho up there are very aggressive in the clear water oh. up there. And you throw a spoon out there <laughs> and you have to stop spoon fishing because it's just coho, coho, oh. coho. And you're like, all right. Too many you know, coho. Too many coho. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are those all wild fish up there? They all, got any, no hatchery fish. programs up there, right? They've tried hatchery programs in the past because the water is so cold up oh, there, yeah. and the fish are so used to what they're where they're living. Mm -hmm. They've tried planting fish in the past. They've never worked anywhere up there, and they won't come back. So it's all wild fish. No kidding. Yeah. How about that? Uh, going back next year? Maybe two years? God willing. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. so, always on your list, bucket yeah, list every absolutely. year if you can make it back up there. I know you've had a passion for that as long as I've known you. So, And, and I will say, if you are a steelhead fisherman, mm -hmm. I've said this once, I've said it a million times. you got to go do England, it. Yep. You have to go to the Skeena at least once. Bring a box of spoons, bring some flies, bring some spinners. Uh -huh. How about that? Bring uh -huh. that with you. There you go. And if you want, I really want a trophy steelhead, that's where you need to go. Absolutely. Well, nicely done. Pictures mm -hmm. were uh, great for the ones you took time to take. I know yeah, you yeah. don't like to always just stop and take a bunch of photos. So you just like to let them things go and sure. go on their way, right? But, I like, um, to like to say, I got a lot of pictures of me holding 10-pound steelhead. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. So, <laughs> nicely done, buddy. Uh, well done. So, all right, we're going to jump out for a quick break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We come back. Got a few uh, bits of information here to get through and close out the show. Be back in a few right here, Fish Hunt Northwest. All Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. Cutbacks in funding and fewer law enforcement resources are affecting our businesses and communities. If your business is feeling the effects, Phoenix Protective may be the solution you are looking for. They offer security solutions customized to meet your needs. From remote video monitoring in their 24-hour control center to a proactive, experienced security professional on site, Phoenix Protective has over 20 years experience in ensuring the safety of their customers. Team members are highly trained and proactive, giving them the ability to adjust to the changing needs of their customers. Customers choose to work with Phoenix Protective because they provide the next level in security support to industries such as schools, hospitals, transit, and utilities. For a security assessment to see how Phoenix Protective can help you and your business, visit their website at www.phoenixprotectivecore.com and select contact. 
All right, welcome back here in studio as we wind down the show. So, uh, you know, we are targeting Coho today. Of course. Yesterday and today. Today uh, uh, it was I a bit of I think we were. I think we were. <laughs> lots of fish breaking the water, breaking our spirits. Lots of lots of Coho stampeding on through there. Mm -hmm. Gin clear water. Well, I'll say gin clear for that particular fish. Oh, because There's 10 I mean, plus feet of visibility. Yeah, yeah, it was just really, in the sun beaming through. We went out there yeah. with our buddy Scott Crawford. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, throwing spinners. And, sure. and I twitched a lot of jigs. I think I went through every color pattern in the box. Yeah. I went through all different types of cadence on my retrieve. I right? was watching. You were going slowly yeah. and quickly. Yep. And more Just movement, all different movement. cadences trying to figure out which one are they going to mm -hmm. react to because it's a reactionary bite. If I, if I had a dollar to bet, if I had to bet, mm -hmm. In that kind of clear water, because it's just profile and movement, I would think right. a jig would outfish everything. Especially when Wouldn't the tide you? slowed down. Right. And we get that, we almost have that pool of water on the backside of that mm -hmm. little current seam. You're just thinking, oh, they're going to be right off that edge. We're going to just twitch them up. And I went through every color in the in my spoon box and the yep. spinner box, yep. and I just got a whole bunch of fins in the air at me. And lo and behold, all of a sudden you hook into a fish, and then we're like, yeah. is that a Chinook? No, it's a, uh, boy, it's pulling pretty. Oh, look at that, by golly, it's a chum. Wow. Right? Wah, <laughs> it's a, wah, wah. Look how bright that chum is, too. I, uh, I was like, are you kidding me? So here we are, mid uh, October, yeah. and the chum are already coming in. Low water don't matter. That's one of the most durable fish on the planet. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful salmon. And right? uh, yeah, so <laughs> they're already showing up. And then as we're looking around, I'm watching the behavior of these fish. Yeah, the coho are boiling over here, but hey, up under that tree, everything that's porpoising out of the water, oh, those are all chum. Those yeah. are definitely mm -hmm. chum. Uh, I've seen that type of water break before right. with chum coming in and you know, some of the tributaries we fish out here. We saw Same a school exact. moving up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're okay. definitely coming yeah. in now. Mm -hmm. So it brings me back to yesterday. We were marking a ton of fish on the sonar oh, out there. Oh, my. It didn't look real. It my screen, like my like Raymarine you... was absolutely lit up. That Axiom Pro was just constantly arced with fish. I'm not... It uh, looked like demo mode. Oh, it did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's not too far-fetched to think now that a good amount of those probably are chum mixed in with those coho because, yeah. you know, they weren't biting, but uh, there was a lot of fish moving through on certain times of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably a good mixture of chum and coho out there now in the salt water, I mm -hmm. would have to suspect. So that's probably uh, a couple of the things we're up against. But, you know, it was good to get out with Scott today. Good to get yeah. you out on oh, the, yeah. uh, the salt water yesterday. A mm -hmm. couple days of uh, hard work and fishing, and, you know, that's fishing, man. It, it, is fishing you don't know until you go as we like to say and well with this right. weather you have to go sure what are you gonna do the only thing you're to battle right now is the wind as right. we found mm -hmm. yesterday this mm -hmm. today i mean it would have been a great day to be out there on this tomorrow yeah if you're looking at the tide tomorrow in the in the, the wind or lack thereof ideal saturday sunday gonna be blowing pretty good probably won't go try to put mm -hmm. the boat out there tomorrow a little too busy to get out there and fish but if i had to pick a day between now and sunday tomorrow would be the day for me to get back out there because it's gonna fish and hope Hopefully, mm. without with the lack of wind and the water settling down, it's going to clean up a little bit. It was there was zero visibility when we were out there. One thing people got to be mindful is in these shallow, uh, brackish water type fisheries, when that wind kicks up and you get that tide change and those big mud flats out there, and that that wind starts whipping those waves up and stirring that stuff up against that sand. It's like a big egg beater. Yeah, once it gets all washed mm -hmm. in there and in and out with the tide, and then you get all that seaweed and stuff. There's a lot of garbage in the water, a lot oh of a lot of stained water. We had, like you said, we started yesterday morning maybe six inches to a foot of visibility compared to what we watched in the video earlier. I was watching and I was going like, We had five, dude. six feet, yeah. yeah. Oh, I Man. know. Yeah, so it makes quite the difference. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, jump to the hunting realm here. There are uh, there was an announcement put out, um, I believe, by WDFW. Make sure you check your regulations and get online to check if you're if you're hunting this weekend for the opener with Modern Rifle, and you're going to go on to private timber companies that are open for public access. Be sure to check their websites. A number of private timber company public access locations are closing due to red flag warning. I can't believe we're saying red flag warning mid-October, but again, but it was it, 81 degrees again today. Right, right. And I made a comment even when we were going back up river, gosh, that wind is actually feeling a little bit warm, you right. know? So uh, red flag warning. Crazy. And certain uh, timber stands as we work our way through this weekend, hopefully this will be the end of it. Rain on the horizon next week, you know, originally, Bill, I was getting excited about the forecast. We had yeah. rain yeah. about the 8th through the 12th of October. And I thought, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to get out of the woods here and, and you know, finally get up into right. tributaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they just kept pushing that forecast out. Mm -hmm. And I keep watching the weather and you look at uh, the, 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 the rain gauge that is to come and you watch your river forecast and everything's just flat line. You know, everything looks like they're in full cardiac arrest right now because it ain't moving. Right. So, we, have, we have to keep the faith, though. It, it is, in Northwest, it, it's 
Fall in the Northwest, mm -hmm. the rains will come, and there will be a time. And I will remind you that we're all going to be going, I man, it's going to stop Shut the raining. faucet off, it's man. Gonna stop. Yeah. It. So it's going to stop. The other thing you got to be ready for is once that rain does show up, and if we get an oh, inch dear. or two or three over a five or six day window, that water coming up and washing all that light debris and all them leaves that have fallen oh, down and just all the dirt and everything. A, it's, a, a summer's worth of dust yes. is going down the creek, yep. so it's going to be a morass. It'll be filthy. It'll take yeah. a few days longer to clean up than it would, say, mm -hmm. if we were you know, into November and had a couple days of rain. So mm -hmm. it's got to flush all that stuff out, get on the drop, turn to green, and then uh, it's game time. So, oh But as far as hunting, yeah, make sure you check your websites and your access points for... Uh, privately owned timber companies, some of them are locking the gates to get through this red flag warning for the opening weekend of deer hunting modern rifle. Um, with that, speaking of hunting, hey, I uh, want to remind folks, if you haven't jumped on and checked it out already, we do have our upcoming hunts in November and December with Shelby Ross, Ross Outdoor Adventures. We have uh, two hunts in uh, coming up December, or excuse me, November and then December. Uh, both of those are two-day hunts. We have a two-day duck hunt in November, November 6th arrival, hunting the 7th and the 8th. It's a two-day duck hunt, mm -hmm. 375 per day. That includes a uh, night of lodging and, of course, dinner. I think we got a slide about that, Jordan, if you haven't put it up yet. No. Nope. So, um, and then also hunt number two is in December, December 12th arrival. We're hunting the 13th and the 14th. It's a two-day hunt. It is uh, duck hunt on Tuesday, goose hunt on Wednesday. I already have plenty of people signing up for that. People want to get on that goose hunt because it is really good just before right. Christmas there. So, uh, yeah, get out there and get your Christmas goose. So, two-day hunt. <laughs> Check it out on our Facebook page. All the information is there. Call Ross, Ross Outdoors, uh, 509. Call Shelby, 509-750-7763. Go to his website, Ross Outdoor Adventures. Uh, tell them you're with the Fish Hunt Northwest group and would like to sign up for either November or December. The two-day hunts that we have uh, scheduled would love to see you folks there. So, well, sir, I want to yes, thank sir. you. My pleasure as usual. For joining me as well. And I believe, depending on how Tommy's doing, regardless, I think you're coming back over next week because we're going to do some more fishing. Well, we have a revenge tour to do. We have a revenge tour. <laughs> I will be looking at the weather and the wind and the tides, mm -hmm. and we will uh, make a go of it and try to decide, do we go in river? Do we get back out there on the, on the salt? Uh, do we go try to do something completely different? Do we drop the boat in the lake and see if we can even get some of these coho or uh, kokanee that are staging up? We may. That's where we might wind up. I mean, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> I would like to. I haven't done it, and I would like to go out here and see if we can't get some of these bigger kokanee here towards the end of season as they're staging up. You know, they're waiting for rain too. The creeks that they spawn in around here right. are completely dry right now. So we need a good flush of rain so those little buggers got uh, creeks to go up into. Perhaps a small jig. We may be able to hover over ah, them a jig, huh? Yes. But, uh, yeah, we may have to give the mm -hmm. kokanee thing a go just for one day, just to uh, say, hey, we tried it. Yeah. And hey, and look maybe at these, just to right? catch fish. Maybe to get <laughs> maybe to yeah. catch fish, mm -hmm. catch some vampires as they're known to be. Yeah. Those things will start turning red and green they're right beautiful. now. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. So, all right, that is going to do it for us this week here at Fish in Northwest. Appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Always a pleasure with you, my friend. And uh, until next week, get out this weekend. Good luck if you're able to access the woods and get out. Uh, hopefully you find a deer uh, in your sights and be extra safe in the woods, please. And be careful with this fire danger. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week, Thursday night, 6 p.m. right here, Fish and Northwest.